we've reviewed each of the eight parts of speech, but now we're going to get into um, a little more study of what each part of speech does and how they're used within sentences and how we use them as readers and how we use them as writers. So the first one is a preposition. Start with a definition, a word that shows a relationship between a noun and another word in the sentence. So what does that mean? If I look at the sentence, on Saturday, I'm going to the beach. The first prepositional phrase here is on Saturday. It's got a noun here, Saturday. When am I going? The preposition on shows a relationship between when I'm going and Saturday. The relationship is between the noun Saturday and going. We've got another prepositional phrase over here, to the beach. The noun at the end of this phrase is beach. It's showing a relationship again back to going. When am I going? So prepositions are at the beginnings of these phrases. They're followed by a noun and they show a relationship. So we don't really see prepositions by themselves. We really see them with prepositional phrases. So we look at what does a prepositional phrase look like. If I think about the term phrase, a phrase automatically means it's a group of words. It starts with a preposition, has modifiers in the middle, and a noun has to be at the end. We could use a formula to set this up. Just like in math, if you have a formula to figure out the circumference of a circle, you don't have to memorize every single circumference. You just need a formula. So our formula is going to be you start with a preposition, you can have modifiers in the middle, and then you end with an object of a preposition. And if we look up here, even within our definition, we had lots of different prepositional phrases because they're everywhere. So what does this look like? Well, a preposition um, is a set list of words, and I have you memorizing them in class. We have three different sets that we're going to work with, and once you memorize them, it's going to make it a lot easier for you to identify them in sentences. We talked about modifiers as we reviewed the eight parts of speech. Modifiers are adjectives and adverbs. They're used to describe things. So I have the preposition over here, on. And I've got some modifiers. The is an article adjective. Small and round are describing words. So the object of a preposition is a really fancy name for a noun or a pronoun that comes at the end of a phrase. Table. On the small round table. We can have as many modifiers in the middle that we want. The goal of a prepositional phrase is always to add some description to your writing to show what it is that you're talking about. So what makes them so confusing? Lots of people have trouble identifying them in sentences because there's a lot of overlap. The first thing that you might confuse a preposition with is an adverb. We've already said that a prepositional phrase has to have a preposition and a noun. It's allowed to have modifiers in the middle. So it's always going to be with a group of words. An adverb, however, is just by itself. It might look like a preposition because it's one of the words that you memorized on your list, but there's no noun at the end. Take up, for example. Billy ran up the stairs. Where did he run? Up. Up the stairs. Stairs is the noun that's at the end of the phrase. It's the object of the preposition. If I look at the next sentence, Billy looked up and saw the alien spacecraft. There's no noun that comes right after up. It's just telling me where did he look? He looked up. It doesn't say up in the sky or up above him. It just says up. So when you see one of these words that looks like a preposition, but there's no noun following it, then it's an adverb. Another thing that confuses prepositional phrases is when you see an infinitive. An infinitive looks a lot like a prepositional phrase because it starts with one of the same words, to. An infinitive, though, is to plus a verb. So you really have to have your understanding of what the difference is between a noun and a verb. If we look at the sentence here, mom gave the money to me. I have to look at the word that comes after to and think, is that a verb or is that a noun or a pronoun? And I know that me 
is a pronoun. I could also say, is it something I can do? Can you me? That's not an action. It's not a verb. Mom wanted to give the money to me. I see to again. To, this time, is followed by a verb, and it happens to be an action verb. Mom wanted to give the money to me. You'll see that I have brackets around it, because as we go through these in class, I have you code them. We highlight prepositional phrases, and we're going to put brackets around infinitives, and that's how we can visually see how they're used in the sentence, that they're very different. The last confusion comes with dependent clauses. Now a clause is a lot like a phrase. A phrase is a group of words and a clause is a group of words. The difference with the clause is that it also has a subject and a verb. And we're going to be talking specifically about dependent clauses. Dependent clauses start with these words called awubuses, our mnemonic to help us remember the subordinating conjunctions. After the game, we ate pizza. I see the word after, it's on the list of prepositions I memorized, has a noun at the end and some modifiers in the middle, after the game. The is not a verb, I don't, and I don't have a subject and a verb within this phrase, so it's not a clause. After we left the field, we got pizza. I see that same word here at the beginning, after. If I look, there is a noun at the end, field. Now I want to look, are the words in between modifiers? I see the describes field, the field, but we're not talking about left field here. And we also doesn't modify field. So now I have to think back to what else could be between that noun, and we look and see if there's a subject. Is there something that the, that part of the sentence is talking about? Who is it talking about? It's talking about we. And what did we do? We left. So if I have a subject and a verb in there, it's not going to be a prepositional phrase. It's a dependent clause. So just to review, if it's got noun with some modifiers, it's a prepositional phrase. And if it's got a subject and a verb, it's a dependent clause. The subject is we and the verb is left. So what we're going to do now is practice identifying prepositional phrases. You're going to get your list out of your binder that has, or it's on page one of your interactive notebook, and it has all the different prepositions in there. And you're going to look for them in here and see, are they followed by nouns? Are they followed by verbs? Or are they by themselves? If they're followed by nouns and you see a prepositional phrase, you're going to highlight them. If you see two with a verb, then it's not a preposition, it's an infinitive, and you're going to put a bracket around it. And if you see one with a, and I don't think I put any on here, but if you did find one with a dependent clause, you're going to underline it, the whole dependent clause. Okay, good luck.